know someone who always blows his or her top? Introducing another game that just might be the prototype for a new solution to an anger management class. Apply like research and development in this kind of game. Well, the topic itself is a very vague and abstract topic. Okay, so, sure. Show me. No problem. So, uh, the topic itself is very vague and uh, abstract. Yes. So, it's about modeling conversation in games. Mm. Now, that's very weird. Like, how would you model conversation in games, and why? What is you? modeling conversation in the first place? Exactly. So, it's trying to see like, if you see traditional games, right? You have a cut scene between two characters, so they're talking to each other. But when they talk to each other, they don't really have expressions on their faces. So I might be—I mean, the character might be angry at the other character, but that is not expressed. It's just like MSN or SMS, right? Exactly. Where you talk so, to someone, don't there's know. Nothing, there's not, no feedback. There is no emotion. Nothing is happening. So what if we can take this concept and try to make this more interesting? How do we make it? So this is an experiment, more like it's, you could call it a game, but it's more like an experiment. What if we do this for uh, this game and? I think we reached a, a research goal when one of our playtesters said that this is an interesting concept. And what if I take this concept and put and put it in a game called like Monkey Island, which is more about conversation and trying to figure out puzzles. So that is when we realized that yes, this is an interesting concept, and we need to research more into this kind of a thing. Okay. So how can a, a game like that be used? Uh, this can this is used as a prototype. Okay. So as I said, you take this concept and put it in commercial games and see what the response is and. Because right now conversations are quite boring, you you normally skip the conversation. How do we make that more interesting? Is what we were trying to do, and that is what the research is all about. I see. So this kind of prototype software, when improved, of course, can actually be applied into games to make the conversation something that people actually want to. Exactly. So it's like a tool for game designers, and um, this might be the beginning. But um, our product owner wanted to make six, five other games apart from this. So we're trying to explore different things, and that is how you get research into this kind of uh, this one. So tell us how it actually works. Okay, so we first start. Uh, as I said, uh, we have basically what happens is there are two brother kings here who are fighting over the possession of. As this. all brothers do. Yes, who are fighting over the possession of this grove. But this grove is actually owned by this goddess called Alush, and she has this power of controlling emotions through her minions. It's aimed at her young children, but we didn't really have this in mind when we were making so it. There was no real target audience. No real target audience. I mean, conversation is something that's open to everyone, and if real, ch- I mean, actually, when we play tested, real, uh, small children enjoyed this game more than adults. Adults were trying to figure out what this game was about, but young kids were like, "Oh, I can throw emotion. I can make this guy angry. He looks fat. Let's <laughs> make him angry." So it was quite funny, and we thought that yes, young children will, who actually we thought was going to find this difficult to understand, actually enjoyed this game more. Well, it might be a good uh, tool to teach them, you know, that, you could say that. yeah, good tool to teach them, you know, that's that's what happens when you make people angry. So, you could do that. Uh, and it could be a moral lesson in a way. You could do that, but we didn't think that far ahead. But yes, you could use this. Okay. So this is when everything's all calm. Yes, this is all. Ca- I mean, this is all neutral. Nothing is happening, and they're just like talking, "Hello, what's up?" and things like that. And it's expressed through the font and everything. Yes. So okay. let me make him angry. Okay. So you're making him angry now by putting it away like fire. Yeah. I mean, this is the angry Quaka. So when I draw, pick this and drop it on him, he gets angry because okay. Alush has the power to do that. And if you make him angry and brave, he's. He is now not going to listen to you anymore. Ah. So now you are you are you are arrogant and you are uh, angry. So that that's the kind of thing. So it's a combination of both of them. So now you can see that his thought oh. process are, is different. So when this guy is angry, this guy actually gets angry too. Like if I'm angry at you for no reason. So it actually reacts. Yes, it does so react. So how 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 does it actually react within the system? Uh, we've designed the system as in our designer came up with this model where this person is a more timid person and uh, he reacts very erratically. So 
in a way, it's an interactive artificial intelligence. You can't call it artificial, it's scripted. But yes, he has his own character and her own profile as such. Ah. Yeah, so if I... Now this guy is scared. So if I make this, make him... Uh, I need to first make him neutral and then... Oh, so you take away all the scared... Yeah. Yes, he's getting more very brave. And then you can see that he's getting a little scared because he's not acting like himself. I see. So slowly he'll become scared. So slowly he gets scared. So if I continue to proceed. So now he gets scared. And uh, one of the things we wanted uh, people to do in this game is try to figure out how this is working. Like, I explained to you how this is working. But we wanted the player to figure it out. And if you play the game for quite some time, you can try to get all the different endings. So what kind of endings do we have? Uh, okay, let me just go back to this. So we call them fates because these endings are not just what happens to the brothers, but also what happens to you, the goddess. Ah, uh, so you are actually the goddess. Yeah, okay. you're the actual goddess. So Alush the Fruitless. Basically, you just made them swing from one emotion to another and nothing really ac was accomplished. So you're Alush the Fruitless and they kept fighting again and again. Ah, uh, so there's the Destroyer, there's the Fruitless. Yeah, so Destroyer is when you make them angry and fight, okay. and continue to fight more aggressively. Then you have Reward. Basically, the you solve the problem. Yes. Then it's the best of outcome, of course. Yes. And then this one is when you support one of the kings. Ah, uh, so, so that means yeah, so one of the kings wants to build a palace and the other wants to build an astronomical tower. So if you support one, then you become the opulent and you're famous because you're a goddess of luxury. And then if you support the other brother, you are Lush the Learned because it's an astronomical tower and you, you, know, you want scientific learning to happen and things like that. I see. Well, that's very interesting. So there's a, in a way, there is a moral... Uh, yeah, yes, education yes. program in, yeah. in the whole thing. But the thing is, we leave it open to the players to choose which they want. It's, it's not like, okay, this, I mean, most games, it's like, okay, you need to do this and you have to do this. Here, it's like, choose what you want. And that so is the like thing. It's like a storybook with the choose your own ending kind yeah, of a... Something like that. So it is like, choose your own ending. Which god are you? And that's what we're trying to get the players to do. Okay, so you can decide what kind of person you are just by playing the game. You can, yeah, sure. <laughs>